it's not in anyone's interest for this to go on. So I think, you know, grab a settlement yes. when you can, if Ukraine's um, integrity, territorial integrity, and its uh, essence as a, mm. a, as a free nation mm. uh, can be guaranteed. Yeah. Time to invite you into our daily briefing room where we can talk to one of our leading tactical and strategic minds about the war in Ukraine. Welcome then to the former Chief of the Defence Staff, General Lord Richards. Good evening to you. Good evening, John. Uh, good of you to join us. Thanks for, for, for coming on. Should we talk first about, about what is going on between Washington and Russia? Because... We now know the American National Security Advisor to the President, that's Jake Sullivan, he has been in, com in conversation with Moscow. Now, what do you anticipate? What do you reckon that conversation would have been? Well, um, I'm very relieved that Jake Sullivan uh, has been in uh, touch, in conversation, you say, with the Russians and, of course, the Ukrainians, uh, because uh, whether some like it or not, uh, all wars end through diplomatic means. Um, and it's been a worry to a number of us that there hasn't seemed to be uh, any diplomatic dialogue for a number of months. And I think uh, that he's now doing it um, at least reassures us that people are actively looking for mechanisms to resolve this, this quite tragic war. So you, it's your judgment that the... Uh, the security advisor in, in the White House, is looking for some way to, to scale down the war, to get them round the negotiating table with, with Ukraine, because there's no sign of the Ukrainians or, of, or President Zelensky wanting that now. No, and um, I do understand President Zelensky and uh, the vast majority, as I understand, of Ukrainians who support his line would find it very difficult to negotiate while Russia uh, occupies still quite large tracts of Ukrainian territory. Um, now, there's that territory which has been taken by Russia since February the 24th, and there's that which was taken in 2014. And I think um, uh, the uh, Americans, I don't know, but I suspect the Americans will be saying to the Russians, there's no way that uh, the Ukrainians, uh, and, and this would not have our support anyway, uh, will negotiate until you at least uh, withdraw uh, to the 2014, uh, uh, sorry, the, the post-2014 uh, boundaries, i.e. Crimea and, and eastern Donbass. Mm. So um, uh, President Zelensky really, until that has happened, um, which politically and militarily, I think would find it very difficult. And there's broad acceptance of that. Of course, whether there is in Moscow is a different issue. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it would be impossible, wouldn't it, for America, at least America, some maybe in Europe would take a, a slightly different view, but America could not surely agree to uh, uh, starting talks or pushing for talks while Crimea was still in Russian hands. Maybe at a certain stage they might have looked for that, but now it seems seems impossible, doesn't it? Well, I'm not so certain. Um, I think there could be some arrangement over Crimea, um, a properly monitored and executed plebiscite or referendum, uh, perhaps a sort of Hong Kong deal uh, whereby uh, it's allowed to remain in Russia, uh, Russian hands for a, a number of years, um, because the uh, alternative uh, is a very bloody battle um, the loss of a, of a, of a particularly totemic uh, part of, of what Russia has taken in Ukraine, which yes. the Russians view as Russian. And, you know, they're, they're not alone in that, I have to say, yes. in the West, notwithstanding criticism of what they did. Um, so I think uh, if, if uh, Ukraine was to successfully take Crimea, then we get back into this issue of escalation and so rubbing... Putin's nose in what he's done, that he does something, um, you know, silly, such as uh, uh, everyone will know what I'm going to say, mm. uh, recourse to tactical nuclear weapons and the risk of escalation mm. that would flow from that. So, so if, uh, if Zelensky and Ukraine were to be persuaded to, to, to sit down with Russia, then that would surely require some sort of pressure as well as as well as as well as argument it, they, would they would they not need to be told look we're giving you all the support that we can now but that will not continue 
in any circumstances. We, we think it might be a good idea to talk to Russia and, you know, we can only guarantee you the sort of support you've been getting if you at least contemplate that. Is that a realistic scenario? I think it would be um, uh, more reassuring than that. We've got to look at what is the likely outcome of this war. Um, and people tend to look at it in territorial terms. Um, and, of course, that is a big part of the equation. But I think more and more people will look at it in terms of guaranteeing whatever remains uh, of the future Ukraine, which will be the vast majority yeah. uh, of it, uh, less potentially Crimea and perhaps uh, some of the far eastern Donbass, if they agree to go back to the 2014 um, boundaries. Um, so uh, at that point, um, if Ukraine's uh, uh, territorial integrity uh, can be guaranteed by guarantees from the West, um, not necessarily, I think, membership of NATO, but something uniquely tailored to uh, ensuring that Ukraine feels secure and that her economy uh, can be built up and start to prosper again. Then I think there may, might be the basis of some uh, of, of negotiations, at least. Uh, w w that we can be slightly more positive about. Yeah, I suppose it's possible, and I'm speculating now, that if the, the American midterm elections, and they're voting in America now, result in the Republicans taking control not just of the House of Representatives, but the other House on Capitol Hill, the Senate, it'll be, well, the idea of supplying Ukraine with weapons and, and financial support at the level we've seen now, that becomes thrown open, doesn't it? And President Biden may be more inclined to seek terms. I think uh, my understanding is uh, probably not as good as yours, John, but uh, I've got exactly the same information. And clearly, this is going to be a factor. Uh, and of course, if uh, President uh, Trump uh, announces his, his candidacy for the 24 elections, then that will accelerate that instinct or aggravate that instinct within the Beltway. So I think it is another factor that President Zelensky uh, will have to take into account yes. all the more reason to get on uh, and seek a solution that doesn't uh, lead to a long, drawn-out, very unstable uh, conflict in Ukraine, which is, mm. I'm afraid, is the alternative. I mean, Russia's, uh, probably Russia's aim is, and it sounds rather clumsy, this, is to uh, win by not losing. Yes. Uh, if you get it. And uh, uh, I think that that is a real risk for all of us because the people will tire uh, eventually through economic or political, uh, for political or economic reasons uh, of this uh, war, uh, or at least people, I mean, I think we should think that that will, be ha will happen. Uh, military, you know, instability of the kind we would then see in Ukraine could spread. Uh, because they'll conduct it in other ways than simply fighting within Ukraine. It's not in anyone's interest for this to go on. So I think, you know, grab a settlement yes. when you can. If Ukraine's um, integrity, territorial integrity and its uh, essence as a, mm. a, as a free nation mm. uh, can be guaranteed. Yeah, of course, Ukraine can, can claim with some justice to be doing quite well. I mean, we're seeing pretty convincing reports, aren't we, of, uh, of Russian soldiers, Russian conscripts, in many cases perhaps rather reluctant conscripts, being thrown into the front line where they present really quite easy targets for Ukraine strikes. And we're, we're, we're seeing these reports of, of, of body bags being sent back to, to Russia, which will have a corrosive effect on support for the war. Uh, you, you here, uh, you think it would, um, but funnily enough, um, well um, received or respected uh, polling. Uh, I think it's coming out in the next day or two, but I was given a sneak view of it this afternoon. Um, suggests that um, actually Russian uh, urban and rural uh, populations continued in the vast majority to support it. Really? So yeah. I don't think it's having that political impact yet. Mm. Militarily, of course, it, it does have an impact. Um, and uh, But that said, a general winter, as we might call it, is coming here, coming fast. But that will mean that operational level, larger level 
uh, gains will be pretty difficult to achieve, albeit that you know, tactical gains might be achievable even in, in very bad weather. Okay, really interesting to get your view. Thank you for joining us. That's uh, General Lord Richards, former Chief of the Defence Staff in our briefing room today.